Greetings, my little stainers. Cubake here, wanting to share with you all something I saw on Facebook the other day. A post that has now been interestingly deleted by its owner. A couple weeks ago, my cousin shared the following. For those of you who don't want to take the time to read the whole post, I'll briefly sum it up for you. Apparently, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, there was a man, Daniel Dropik, who tried to start an alt-right group on campus. To promote this group, he handed out little slips of paper which said, Fight anti-white racism on campus. Join our student club. Hashtag UW Alt-Right. While handing out these slips of paper to fellow students outside of an environmental studies lecture, Danny Boy here ran into a peer by the name of Dane Scar and talked to Scar about his group. After, Scar took to posting about the encounter on Facebook, where his post got hundreds of shares and massive support. Now, if you want any extra information on this event, I have two articles discussing the event in the description. I would recommend the Badger Herald over the Daily Cardinal. Not only does the former have a more detailed version of the account, it seems to hold its bias in check better than the latter. While they both seem to have a liberal agenda, the Badger actually took the time to explain partly why the alt-right is considered a neo-Nazi and hate group, rather than just applying the label as the Cardinal does. Now, upon seeing this post, I had a lot of questions based on what Scar had to say about the encounter. This was before all these articles were posted, and I didn't have anything to go on except the single post. I commented my concerns, and my cousin quickly responded and we had a very thoughtful conversation, one that is now gone due to the lack of the original post. However, one question she had was, quote, I just don't understand why someone would want to join a group like this, end quote. And I responded with, because of posts just like this. So today, I thought I'd share why attempts to be progressive, such as this, are fueling the fire, so to speak, of the alt-right movement, and how it's causing harm rather than doing any actual good. First of all, let's take a look at some of the things Scar had to say in his post. One of the first things he says is that he's glad he encountered Dropik so he could, quote, share the unfortunate normalization of ignorance that has come with President Trump's inauguration, end quote. I believe true progression is reached through having an open dialogue, allowing people from different viewpoints to come together and share their ideas so ultimately we can come up with the ones to do the most good for the most people. Now this can't be done without allowing their radical views to be told as well. Even though I believe people should give the alt-right a chance to express their beliefs, I understand why Scar opposes this group and why he wouldn't want it on his campus. It is labeled as a hate group, and it is hard to defend the group when its leader and other members are shown doing Nazi salutes. So, Scar sets the tone early by labeling his opposition as ignorant. But who even is his opposition? Is it Dropik and the alt-right he is referring to? But he mentioned Trump. Is he now throwing in everyone who supports Trump as ignorant? This is pandering at its highest form. Rather than keeping this post within the boundaries of UW-Madison, he blows it out of proportion to gain support and praise from the left. Did Trump empower the alt-right? Sure, but Scar's wording implies Trump is the root of this issue, which he isn't. Richard Spencer started the alt-right years before Trump was into politics. I digress. But I think it's important to recognize how Scar panders to his audience by unjustly blaming Trump. Also, labeling your opposition doesn't help the stereotype that liberals are arrogant and condescending, especially when you are labeling the other group as ignorant. Secondly, Scar states that, quote, there have been students and staff who have subscribed or claimed to not seeing color while discussing racism, end quote. Um, why did he bring this up? He goes on to discuss anti-white racism later, but why did you have to bring up people who believe in being colorblind? I'm not saying being colorblind is correct. In fact, I gave a speech about how being blind to color is harmful, but it seems as though there isn't an actual point to bringing this up. He just did it to make conservatives look stupid. Again. Also, look at all of the buzzwords he uses. Quote, default cultural capital of norms, dehumanizing, colonialism, systematic white racism, end quote. He takes this pandering to an extreme in the following sentence. In addition to the dehumanizing and unadjust centuries of colonialism and institutional racism that have targeted people of color, this campus has a history of segregating student dorms by race as well. Wait, what? He legitimately just blamed UW Madison for unadjust centuries of colonialism and institutional racism and for being dehumanized. Humanizing. I am not twisting his words at all. He starts off his statement with, in addition, and ends it with, as well. Meaning he believes UW Madison is responsible for everything he said in the beginning part of his sentence. This guy doesn't even know what he's saying. 
Even if he does believe what he's saying, does he offer any support? No. I know it's a Facebook rant, but geez bro, if you're going to accuse your campus of centuries of racism, you should maybe back it up a bit. This post is supposed to regard anti-white racism and how it, quote, does not exist in American society, period. This is not a political view. This is a fundamental fact according to the definition of what racism is, end quote. But where is the evidence for these claims? Scar has written a lengthy paragraph which ultimately concludes with anti-white racism doesn't exist, but doesn't take the time to explain why this is the truth. Rather, his post consists of calling conservatives ignorant, saying people on campus don't see color, claiming white people are privileged, and not victims, calling out his racist campus, and stating the fact that anti-white racism doesn't exist. Scar adds absolutely nothing to the topic of anti-white racism. The only new idea I saw at all during this post was that Madison separates its dorms by race. But am I just supposed to take your word on it? Couldn't I just as easily say Madison has the most integrated and diverse dorms in the nation? You see the problem? This is nothing more than liberals pandering to other liberals, a big circle jerk of confirmation bias. If you truly believe what you are saying is true, then take the time to educate educate me with actual data. I know a lot of people won't care even if you have solid sources, but some of us do. Some of us want to learn and hear other points of view. Now that's not to say that people who shared this post have the same views as Scar. Like I said earlier, upon seeing this post I immediately criticized it and my cousin thoughtfully responded. We both came with an open mind and were willing to hear what the other was trying to say. I didn't understand how there can't be anti-white racism when I can google the definition of racism now, so can you, and Google says, prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. That doesn't sound like something that is strictly limited to white people does it? Also, it seems ludicrous to make a claim such as minorities can't be racist when in videos like this exist. Got some black militant or some angry black man walks up and executes a cracker cop in broad daylight. It's open season on killing white people and cops. It's unavoidable, inescapable. It's funny that now we'll move into a time what a predator will become to prey. Uh, we need to start killing people. First off, we need to start killing the White House. The White House must die. The White House, your fucking White House, your fucking president, they must go. And I promise you, if they go about they burden of, of whatever they said you're doing, you pull your piss out and you fucking bust it. You pull your piss out and you bust it. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna be you against them. It's a white person. Oh yes! They white get their ass! Burn that bitch up! Hey! Fucking fuck! Hey, they beat up! Let's go! Hey, they beat up every white person! They jump every white person. Man, that white person come down, Sherman. He white. Beat his shit, bitch. These videos seem to match the definition of racism given by Google. My cousin responded that the actions demonstrated by minorities that white people deem racist are actually acts of prejudice. She expressed that prejudice, discrimination, and racism all mean very different things, but the media has manipulated them into being one of the same. Racism, as the way she explained to me, is when someone or some group of the dominant race in a country, in this case whites in the US, believes that they are superior due to being the dominant race and have the power of the institutions to perform prejudice acts. That isn't an exact definition, just the general way she explained it to me. It seems as though the difference between her definition and my own is the need of the race to abuse institutions to harm minorities. My cousin stated that she had learned this definition of racism and the media's misrepresentation of the word from her social science classes at Madison, and she is in no way trying to push this definition on me. She even stated that it was okay if I didn't agree. More research needs to be done on my part before I accept this definition, but I appreciate knowing things from her point of view so I can now understand where people like Dane Scar are coming from. This attitude is important for everyone to adopt while discussing politics or topics of the sort. Whether you are on the left, right, or somewhere in between having an open mind, 
giving your opposition a chance to speak, giving yourself a chance to listen, and seeking information before you form a conclusion are necessary to having a productive conversation. I am not an expert on racism and neither is my cousin, but we both respected each other enough to try to see the situation through each other's eyes. Ultimately, this was something not accomplished in Scar's post. Saying something is absolute and cannot be disputed, but then to provide no evidence and label someone who opposes your stance as ignorant is laughable. How many people simply haven't been exposed to Scar's definition of racism? I'm currently in college and will most likely be pursuing some kind of further education in the future. Because of my major, I haven't and probably will never learn about this topic in college. Does that make me ignorant to this topic? in the sense of lacking understanding, sure, assuming this is an actual fundamental fact, as Scar puts it. Quick aside, it's pretty ironic to claim something is fundamental when I just demonstrated how I and many others could have never been taught this. In conclusion, this is one of many attempts by the left to pander to its own audience and make others feel stupid and uneducated. Consequently, the tension between both sides strengthens while the divide between the parties widens. This post is the exact opposite of being progressive. It's regressive. And that is why people want to join groups such as the alt-right, because they see it as a means to fight the regressive nature that prevails in our current media. Not saying it's right, not saying I support it, but I think it's important to understand why this is happening and why groups such as the alt-right are gaining momentum. Even with all the harassment and backlash Tropic and the group in general received, my cousin notified me that the campus will protect the group's freedom of speech and allow them to form. Thank you to anyone and everyone who took the time to watch this video. It took some effort to make and it feels good to have that effort be appreciated. I hope if you didn't necessarily agree with what I was saying, you still found some entertainment value in this video. And as always, if you have any critiques or responses, I'd love to hear them. And if you hate me, please call me out in the comments and mass dislike this video. Have a stainy day.